Jack, the NFL playoffs are here. One of my favorite times of the year. How you feeling about Dallas? I feel confident. You know, we do things at times that wouldn't surprise me, but I'm feeling pretty good. We're going to make it happen. You sound scared to me. <laughs> We've teamed up with DraftKings, an official partner of the NFL, and right now they have an offer you don't want to miss. All customers can get a no-sweat bet. Get a bonus bet back if your same-game parlay or your same-game parlay X bet doesn't hit. Max reward limits apply. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Sign up and use our promo code SMOKE. If you're a new customer, listen up. Right now on DraftKings, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Combine multiple bets together for a shot at an even bigger payout. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. All new customers use promo code SMOKE. That's promo code SMOKE. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Welcome back to All The Smoke, coming to you live from Las Vegas. Jack, we running shit under our own. We, we working for ourselves these days. Yeah, a lot of tags we used, used to normally hear on our show, and we don't hear you ain't gonna hear them, it's just us. Just us. You dig. Today we got, man, one of Billboard's 50 greatest producers of the 21st century. Word. Grammy Award winning producer, created music with the likes of Jay-Z, Beyonce, Rihanna, Miley Cyrus, just to name a few. Welcome to the show, man. Motherfucking Mike Will made it. Man, appreciate, appreciate that, man. Thank you for your time, bro. Appreciate you being it, dog. Already, man. Um, so, Mike, you got a lot of new stuff going on right now. Um, how's life? Day to day. What's new? Talk to us. Minus the bullshit. Life's great. You already know. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to lie. It's like now I'm 34 now. You know what I'm saying? So, like, boom, it's like it's a lot that done happened. And then at the same time, it's like I'm still learning. But, like, like I took like a little break off from like dropping music like just so consistently. It, it, it was really like a minute, you know what I'm saying? Like probably like, I ain't, my last album was like seven years ago. Mm, okay. Yeah, so took a little break off for that. And then I was just like learning, like being able to articulate myself, man, because I have like a whole company. I have producers, I have a production company, I have a record label, mm, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, I lost my hard drives. And then when I lost my hard drives, that made me feel like, it made me take a step away from music, you know what I'm saying? I started buying like real estate, started trying other mm -hmm. like different different mm -hmm. like business ventures and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. just not all the way just zero straight in on music. It's not like I took a step away from music and went and got burnt out, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I want to sharpen up. Just recharge your batteries and diversify your portfolio. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's, That's all it. you did. You know what I'm saying? Congratulations is 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 in order. Uh, ahead of the current season, you parted with ESPN uh, for Music Custom Strategies to be their first ever lead producer in current music. Dope. Uh, what's the first thing uh, you did after getting that call? I mean, partnering with the NBA. I mean, you worked with a lot of greats, but you partnering with the league. No, what did that mean sure. to you? Man, it was dope, bro. It's just dope to be able to like combine music and, and sports, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like, man, that's, everybody either watching the game, listening to mm -hmm. somebody's new album, new yep. song, or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just it, that's just the culture. So it's like, it's dope to make that collaboration. And um, I always been I always been a fan of the NBA. Mm -hmm. I was letting them hear a bunch of different music that I was working on. And then like that Sway Lee and Lotto record really stood out to them. So they were like, man, yo, you think they could do another edit for mm -hmm. like the commercial? Like, and we want you to like give us like a sound really. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? They were like, we usually go to like record labels and and collaborate with like record labels and tap in with their different artists like that. But like we never really locked in with a producer. So mm -hmm. it was dope to like for them to for them to see that. And it was like I came with a couple of different ideas. Like I, I gave them like five beats, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I feel like these have dope energy. We write down a couple names of artists that, that we hear on like on these them. beats. Mm -hmm. So after the Sway and and, um, and Lotto record, boom, we came with um, the Money Bad Yo and YTB Fat. Like I just like what they got going on. So they had knocked out one of the beats and then we got a couple more songs on the way and stuff. So it was, it was dope. It's a dope collaboration. So at the end of the season, you guys will pretty much have a whole album then, if I'm not mistaken, right? So, you have nat so you're doing all the national games, the big games all season that will yeah. be something you produced it's not like a locked down project it was something that we talked about though for sure like man put all the songs together just so we talk I, I, so we talking it into existence then yeah We're really right really now, just yeah. manifested it right you know what i'm saying because right like they had they had liked the idea because i was like man i just make music that people can buy to you yep. know what i'm saying yep. so it's like boom i was like man that can mess around and be an album man so what exactly 
does like the job detail like do you dictate do you have to check in with them you give them ideas they give you feedback like how exactly does the partnership work it's really just like a collaboration man i don't, I don't really like to want to i don't want to go in there and just like man i'm i'm like put my mind around like making an artist because mm -hmm. espn is not an artist you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's like really like they let me know the vibe that they're looking for and then boom like the now or never came about because with the tournament it was just like, okay, man, it's like a tournament within the league, within the season. regular season. Mm -hmm. So it was like, man, boom. Like, they were like, man, we need some high energy, some like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just imagine like a little side, side, like tournament going on within the season. And like, this is something else that people fighting mm -hmm. for. Like how LeBron went off last night. Like, it's like, man, what the hell off? You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And it's like, he taking it serious. Like, it's like the playoffs, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? So. Boom, but now or never, it was like, they needed some high energy, so that's how me, that's how we really chose that beat, gave it the bag, bag nailed the, yeah, nailed the concept. Do, yeah. And, yeah. So how do you get in your zone? Obviously, as athletes, we have our rituals and routines we do to get focused for a game. When you feel like you're at your best, making beats, producing, like, what does that consist of? You, you drink, Man, I gotta, you sip, I gotta, you smoke, what you do? Yeah, I, I smoke, you know what I'm saying, I smoke some gas. I'm really like at my studio in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? I got a studio in Atlanta, like like West Midtown area. And then it's like, it's not really like your typical studio, it's just like open. And then it's like a bunch of different creatives coming through, okay. like, you know what I'm saying? But it's like my, my, my team. So it's like, I can go to them. And then it's like a challenging thing. Cause like they might be making beats and I'm like, bro, who you here on this? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like what room would this live in? Mm -hmm. Like, like how you feel like this is gonna stand out? Cause you know what I'm saying? Right now you just starting off. Like, and I can like challenge them right. in these rooms and I can start seeing like their sounds like form into something, form into something different and like mm -hmm. them start putting their DNA on there. So it's like, I like producing like that. And then I like for show sure cooking up. Like I go to mm -hmm. the studio, make about three three to five beats a day. Easy, like that's just like the regimen. Like I try to make five different bangers, but then it's like working with the different team and coming with the different sounds and then bringing in songwriters and then putting those different songs together and then different artists coming through my studio. And then it's like, I can challenge them and try to get them a different sound. And they doing, they, they coming in there already looking like, yo, this studio is different. Right. Like, man, I got to do something different in here. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then- So you raising uh, their game, you challenging them, competitive. That's the importance of like any producer. Like when we, when we were coming up, like, I know when I was coming up, I'm just saying like, Pharrell, or you know what I'm saying, like Kanye, or you know what I'm saying, any any of our any of our favorite producers, Manny Fresh, you know what I'm saying, Juicy J, DJ Paul, like they they pushing it, but they leaving their DNA, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So you know, every, we already know, like all all those producers I just named, you already know they sound, or yep. it's a song that mm -hmm. pops in your head with yep. that. So it's like I always try to get my team to understand like that part. So then they coming through, leaving that same DNA, like That's dope. word up. When you make a beat, is it with someone in mind, or once you create the beat, then you try to put a name to it, or is it a little even, bit of both? I don't even think. Okay, you just out there doing what you do. Yeah, I don't even think. Like when, I, like I, I literally had a beat machine right here. I'd be like, "Yo, say a number between a hundred and two hundred." You know what I'm saying? And then boom, you could just say anything. One thirty-eight, or you know what I'm saying? One forty-nine, one seventy-six. I make a beat right there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's the tempo. Mm -hmm. So so whatever number you say, boom, I'm got down, boom, put the tempo right there, put the click track on there and just you make go. something. Not even think, just try to do something out of pocket. As long as it's out of pocket and it feel new and fresh mm -hmm. and they got the room like this mm -hmm. and they got the people in the room that don't rap, acting like they rap, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you like got That's when you got some shit, yeah. Yeah. for real, because yeah. that's, that's the vibe, for real, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then it's always good to have like a musician around or somebody who's like good on the keys or like, I like to collab like that, so had them plug up too. Do some live and I issues. might just, I might just do that. Boom! Somebody might be playing the guitar, or playing the piano, or playing playing on the keyboards or something like that, and it's just adding to it and just adding the layers because that's essentially when you're making a song, that's all you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Just stacking rhythm and melody. Your family has a deep mu musical background. Talk about your upbringing and uh, your musical background with your family. I definitely had like cousins I was looking up to for mm -hmm. sure. That was like. You know what I'm saying? Rapping and trying to start their record labels. And then my mom, 
she she sung with the Dottie People's Choir. But my mom never made like any money off the music industry or anything like that. It was just like, it was almost like her going to church. Like, you know what I'm saying? She singing with Dottie People's Choir and they moving around to different churches and different stuff like that. And then my pops, he always had like, he always, he was like a DJ. So he always had hella rac records and stuff in the, in the crib. So like all the Earth, Wind & Fires, all the classics, you know what I'm saying? Bobby Womack, like, all the classics. He had the vinyl. He had all the vinyls. So I used to see him like just put a vinyl on, play play the record, and then when he leave, I want to do the same thing, mm -hmm. but I want to hear something. So I'll put it on there and think I know what I'm doing, break his needle. I'm like, damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Word up. I got two older sisters. So my sister that's closest in age to me, like, she always listened to like R and B, pop, that kind of stuff, like some rap stuff, but like she was like more that lane and then my older sister would be more rap, you know what I'm saying? Like, but she'll be like, she was like outcast, you know what I'm saying? Like her husband put me on like Jay-Z, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause at, at first I was really like just down South hip hop, like all the way. But then her husband put me on like Blueprint and that's when I really started rocking with Jay-Z. I fucked with him on that Juvenile album. But like when I heard that blueprint, I was like, oh no, he hard. Then I went back to Reasonable Doc. And then I just started, you know what I'm saying? Tapping all the way in the right way. I was always like a down south hip hop artist or like a West Coast or like, I like New York artists too, like Nas and DMX, Jetty Kiss, like off the rip, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, so it was like that. So it was always like that mix, that mix up in the, in the crib. I remember my pops had took me to my first hip hop concert with Bone Thugs and Harmony. Ooh. Bone Thugs and Harmony had whooped somebody's ass in the crowd and everything. Like the whole <laughs> concert ended. We had to leave and all that. But my pops was like in the car, he was tripping cause he was like, yo, music's about to end. I'm like, what you mean? He was like, yo, there was no instruments on stage. And I was like, so what man, that shit was hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is like 94, 95. But he used to go on the Earth, Wind & Fire concerts mm -hmm. and all this. So this is his first hip hop concert too. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that just stuck with me. Like, cause I always was like listening to music. But when I started making music, that stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and that that really like, that stuck with me because I, I realized like, okay, that things are like changing and evolution. Like, you know what I'm saying? And like, that's what I even had to look back on like over these last seven years is like looking back and being like, yo, we actually pioneered some shit. Like mm -hmm. we actually like, yeah, yeah. like we weren't a part of that movement. You know what I'm saying? But like, you made that was like movement. the early stages of that. But like being mm -hmm. a student of that, seeing it and not even understanding like there was anything else out there. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And then being able to come in and make our own imprint in that yep. shit. Like, word up. What do you think when you hear these lines? Mike Will made it, Gucci Man slayed it, star status, everybody upgraded. I think about patchwork. First day I met Gucci, man, Gucci, had, well, nah, not the first day I met Gucci. First day, I, this the first day me and Gucci ever recorded. Um, he was working on a mixtape called um, No Pad, No Pencil. And I remember he had called me from Walker's phone because me and Walker used to hang with each other all the time. So like, he called me from Walker's phone early in the morning. He was like, man, wake up. He was like, I'm like, who this is? He was like, man, it's Gucci. I'm like, gonna be at Patchwork at two o'clock, pull up with some, be with some hard beats. But I, at this time, I had already knew Gooch for a couple of years. I already knew Walker for a couple of years, but he never had got on my beats or anything like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like, it was What's cool. that feel like getting that call? Was it goosebumps? Goo like, damn, I got WAP on man, the line? Or? Man, you want to know You want to know how I met Gucci? I was getting my CDs printed up at Patchwork. So I used to always go down there, pay pay a couple hundred dollars for some blank CDs, boom. Give, give me a beat CD, I'll pass them out. So one day I'm getting them pressed up, Gucci was upstairs. And they were like, man, you know Gucci man upstairs. I'm like, for real? I'm like, bro, let me get one of them CDs. So I go upstairs, he going from the studio to the lounge. So I'm like, hey bro, fuck with me, I'm, I got the beats. And I'm like, 15, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck with me, man, I got the beats. He like, oh yeah? Took the beats, went in the lounge, put them in. Him and Fabo in the lounge just freestyling so, on yeah. the beats. You know what I'm saying? So then I'm I'm outside the room and I'm just listening to it. I'm like, that's hard. Like I hope yeah, they record yeah. something. Mm -hmm. So next thing you know, Gooch come out there. He like, hey man, you shot it with the beats. But when he bring me up there, he get my number. He tell me he, he need the session for the beats. He like, man, get, let me get your number, da, da da Now I got his line. I got somebody trying to buy some beats. Like he just knows this young dude calling his phone, but he fought with me. This one, he was doing features for like, I, like 2,500, like 5,000, like, 
You know what I'm saying? This trapped out Gucci, like this mm-hmm. way back in the day. So, boom, he had got locked up. When he got locked up, me and Walker randomly meet each other. We don't even know who each other is. You know what I'm saying? So we in the same club. He got a crew of people. I got a crew of people. One of his guys came in my face, throwing up some. My guy pushed him back. Boom, now I was about to be on. Next thing you know, my boy Ops and Walker come out of nowhere. Walker jump in front of his guys. And now my boy Ops, he come he come up he, and he like, that Walker, they standing in front of us. They dap up. So I'm looking at Ops because my boy Ops had just moved down from New York. So in this in this time of, of like Atlanta clubs, like we fighting in the club, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So like when when I was like dapped up, I was like, hold on, what? You know what I'm saying? And then Walker was like, man, aren't you from New York? I'm like, nah, he from New York. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, man, nah, bro, cool, man. He had a New York hat on, bro. And he told his guys like, hey, man, y'all back up, bro. You know what I'm saying? Then they, then they all went the other way. Then me and Walker ended up running into each other in the bathroom. He leaving out. Then when I leave out, I see him right there in the hallway. I'm like, all right, boom, it's just me and him in the club. You know what I'm saying? At this part of the club. So I'm like, man, I might have to hit with this dude, whatever. Mm-hmm. He wasn't even on that. He just put his arm around me like, hey, bro, I'm just young and just defensive. I'm really too young to even be in the club for real. He put his arm around me like, hey, bro, there's some hoes in here, bro. Like, man, bro, this your side of you? Y'all stay out here? I'm like, hell yeah. I'm like, yeah, we stay out here. He was like, man, I'm like, where y'all from? He was like, man, we're from the south side. I'm like, oh, word. And then I tell him, I'm like, um, man, my bad about earlier, bro. Man, we just be trying to get to the money. He was like, yeah, my boys was tripping, bro. He's like, what you do? He was like, you be hustling? I'm like, nah. I'm like, I'm trying to fuck with the music. And so Walker was like, oh, word. He was like, man, you know, Gucci, that's my cousin. I was like, man, shit, Gucci, my boy. So I pulled my phone out, show him the numbers I got on Gucci. And then he like, man, damn, you know Gucci for real. I'm like, hell yeah. So he was like, man, Gucci about to come home, man. I'm gonna put you with him. And then, so I gave him my number. Then we connected. Then he ended up connecting me and Gucci. You know what I'm saying? Then when me and Gucci ended up connecting, like I used to come to the studio, Shawty Red, Fat Boy, all them, they might be in the studio. These are all the producers I'm looking up to. Mm-hmm. So next thing you know, like, Gucci would just put me on blast, like, I might put the beats on. And I'd be like, man, hell no. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and he like, man, yo, don't do all that nervous stuff, man. Put the beats on. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I put the beats on. They start freestyling to the beats, but he never got on them. So that day right there, the Might Will Made It, Gucci Man Slated part, it was like, that was the first day he called me up to the studio. Boom. And we did star status. I played the beat and he walked in. He was like, he was like, man, yo, Mike Will on that beat right there, buddy. Star status ass nigga, straight celebrity baby. I'm like, oh shit, this nigga turning me up. You know what I'm saying? Then in his verse, he said that Mike Will made it, Gucci Man slayed it, star status nigga, everybody upgraded. From there, right, from that point right right there, like when that song came out, everybody was like, Mike Will made it. That's your name. Cause at first I was going by Mike Will. Mm-hmm. When they heard that, it was just like, all right, Mike Will made it. That's really where the name came from. Mm. We ended up doing like 20 songs, Gucci not even listening to the beats. Like he just Pull up the next mic wheel, go in the lounge, listen to the last song he did, walk straight in the booth, turn the mic on. He don't even listen to the beat. Mike will just pick the beat. Just go in there and freestyle. That's how we were doing no pad, no pencil. That's how we did Guapaholics. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that's where it all started at. And how old were you at that time? I was like 16, 17. Yeah, I was 16, 17. I was, Cause I was still in high school. So that was like senior year type stuff. So like, yeah, that came out 07. So I was like 17, 18, yeah. When he came home this last time, were you at his first video shoot? Man, we we dropped a- The first, as soon as he came home, we did a video, a basketball video at a basketball court at a, at, a, at some house. When Gucci first came home, we did First Day Out the Feds. I had him on the radio in less yeah. than 24 hours, man. Like he called mm-hmm. me, Mike, send me that First Day Out the Feds. Send him the beat. He was like, man, go, go mix it. He couldn't even leave the crib, you know what I'm saying? So boom, I went and mixed it. And the next thing I know, I was like, bro, I'm gonna send to Charlemagne and them. You know what I'm saying? Like Charlemagne heard it, he, he fucked with it. He was like, he was like, bet. And they played it on Breakfast Club. It went up, then he shot the video. So that might be what you're talking about. First day out the feds, mm-hmm. when he was in the house, he couldn't even leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Damn. for real. And then we did Black Beatles. Nah, you know me and Gooch, man, we always rocking like, for real, man. We got it. That's like one of them. You know, y'all know them mm-hmm. dynamic duos, yeah, man. Saying, yeah. like, dynamic duo, for yeah. For real, that that team work where you just ain't even really got to say too much to a person. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Y'all just give and go. He no super solid pass. too. When he came home, he reached out to me. Um, he reached out to him when he was shooting his first video. Like, pull up, Jack. When he had first got home, 
That's hard. And uh, we we knew each other, but we ain't really just rock like that before he went to jail. Okay. When he came home, I guess he had saw somebody posted or uh, supporting him or something. Yeah. And when he came home, he reached out, so that was dope. And he was in a totally different mind state. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Came home, he was all the way focused. So you know what I'm saying? Worried up. That's hard that you were supporting him. Yeah, y'all kiss me that video. I'm in there. <sighs> Is that before you got your nice teeth? I had nice teeth then. Okay. That just this this a new set. Okay. Yeah. And you were still pearly. Every, every time I get some more money, I'm gonna get some new ones. I ain't mad at you. Yeah. you so are. you about to get some new, newer, newer ones? Yep, in about two months. That's before I got my nice, my, my, my nice teeth and shit. Yeah, yeah for real. We all I got nice, my nice teeth. teeth. Yeah, show them bitches. Yo, you did, you did. You did. Uh, influences. <laughs> you uh, spoke on Pharrell. You've also mentioned Timberland, Dre. Um, yeah. Did you obviously took Manny Fresh? Manny, yeah. You took different parts and differences and kind of made it. Your own Sp speak to that and and how those legends influenced your, your sound. Yeah, because like early hip hop, nineties was like West Coast sound, West Coast influence Heavy. or East Coast. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When hypnotized mind came through with like that sound, like you still had UGK, but it was still kind of like West Coast sound, like vibes. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Port Arthur, so UGK was we had definitely a West Coast influence. Yeah, in West here. Coast vibes. Yes. Yeah, A Bar and JG still. It was down south, but it was still kind of West Coast vibe early on. But it was like, man, like for me, it was like, man, when Hypnotized Mind came through, that's what really like started giving like the South, their own like their sound. Mm -hmm. And then it's like from there, you know what I'm saying? You got Lil John take from that sound and then he come with his own sound with Crump, you know what I'm saying? And then like Lil John was a heavy influence where it's like, I respect that he had the city and the chokehold on all spectrums. He had the turned up club mm -hmm. records, the Crump, Crump records with Pastor Trey. And then he had the bangers with the Usher. Hits, yeah. Then he had the joints with Luda. Then he had the mm -hmm. joints with, you know what I'm saying? So Versatility. Yeah, it was like the versatility and the wide range. That's why I respected about like him and like Pharrell and like how they could spread their sound out. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that I always wanted to do. So like from like Lil John and then Shotty Red brought brought like that sound. He had his own sound, like that trap sound. Zay, he brought that bass sound to the A. And then he had his own sound and then drummer boy, like he brought that Memphis sound to the A. And and like I was just seeing it and, and it was like, all right, cool. Like now this is like the South sound, like them 808s and you know what I'm saying? Di different stuff like that. So then I started building my team, the ear drummers. And um When the, when that happened? Oh so six, oh seven? Yeah, ear drummers came about in two thousand seven. And it was just me, you know what I'm saying? And then I was going to high school with my brother plus, and then boom. He was the first one with air drummers. And then I started like, I always was trying to like, in my mind, I always wanted to build this team where it's like, there's a bunch of producers that's thinking outside of the box. That's like thinking on my level, you know what I'm saying? Where I look at them like, man, shit, man, you could do this on your own. But the way I'm thinking, like, man, if we do this shit like this, like, Together. man, we could change the game. Mm -hmm. So it was like, man, I built like a team like that. Everybody on there was like, it was like the gladiators, you know what I'm saying? Like, plus P Nasty. Mars, J Bo. So we, we we started coming with this sound where it's like, man, okay, we're gonna put the, you know what I'm saying, like the, the beats under a filter. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna have the eight oh eights hitting in a distorted way. And then we're gonna take this to future, and then we're gonna take this to Gucci, we're gonna mm. take this to two chains. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna take this to, to trouble. It. We're gonna take this to dump like everybody who, who we were rocking with, like, you know what I'm saying? And um and like boom, that was just like the underground Atlanta sound. But it was like our sound was known for like, okay, the beat gonna sound like it's going under the water. The bass gonna sound like it's distorting. It's gonna have this different kind of sound and it's gonna break like this. And it's like, man, we just kept coming consistent like that on, on every track. And all our beats was always just different. Always, a lot of times the artists would be like, man, I don't know how to get on this one. And, and I might have to tell them like, man, just do you. Like the same flow, like even when we did itching, like rocking with Pluto, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, when he heard the beat, he like, Man, the beat hard. How, you, how I'm supposed to get how on I'm this? How am I supposed to get on this? Bro? I'm like, bro, if you get on this and just do that, we winning flow, bro. It's out of here, like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Cause we winning one of my favorite Pluto songs, like, mm -hmm. my nigga June but got plus like got life plus ninety nine years. We rough, we popping bottles every day, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like just that voice, that tone, like how he was just cutting through. On that song, it was just like. So your beats were almost intimidating to some some of these people. I want to call it intimidating because. The people where I'm naming, like, they are yeah, established, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they are established. Beasts. Like they ain't. But, but still, to me, I think it speaks to like your creativity. You nah, know what I mean? Facts, like you guys facts. are creating that sound, and like shit, I feel it. But how do I jump on it? How do I jump on this? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because like at that time, the sound was a little bit 
too different. To me, that's innovation. You feel mm-hmm. me? Once somebody don't understand something, it's like, okay, man, you cooking with grease. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Pluto, new shit. Pluto didn't really rock with, like, ain't no way around it for, like, the first five times, ten times I brought it to the <laughs> studio. But I only would bring that beat to the studio. Right. And I caught him on a good night. He had just did Tony Montana. And he killed and it. And then ain't no way he did Ain't No Way Around It the shit. same night. You know what I'm saying? But it was like he turned that beat down so many times, but I could just hear him on the Knew beat. It. I knew he was on that beat. Mm-hmm. And it, it just ain't ended no up being way. like a classic. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. At that time, it was like, man, we were trying to make a name for ourselves. So it was like just knowing like, nah, this beat is for this person. Mm-hmm. No lie, this is for 2 chains. Yeah. We ain't going to get this to nobody right now. Like, I gave it to a couple of people, you know what I'm saying? But I knew that but that you beat was seen for- it. That's what I th- see, that's what I was asking earlier. It's just like once you hear it, like you know whose flow and 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 and, and, and is gonna fit on it. Facts. So facts. So you're known as someone who is a monster with the drums. You're known as kind of the drum king. And and, and where did where did that kind of come in, in, into your repertoire? I always wanted to break the rules, like whether it's like this, like the sound of the drum, like the sonnets, where it's like. Man, making that shit distort or making that shit like be in a weird pocket. Any sound that we do, like we all pushing each other like, nah, nah, that sound too regular. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, we need to move it to the left. We need to move it to the right. We need to slow it down. We need to bring the volume up on the 808. I'm arguing with the mixing engineers. Like they're showing me on the board where it's like, no, nah, we can't crank the 808 up anymore because of this, that, and the third. And it's like, bro, that don't matter. I'm talking about how I feel, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to create the new rock and roll. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hip hop, to me, it's the same thing as rock and roll. It's just, this our rock and roll. Like, you feel me? So it's like, nah, let's break the rules a little bit. Like, let's make it distort. Like, you know what I'm saying? Distortion always been art. You know what I'm saying? Like, people love distortion when they listen to rock and roll. So it's like, man, like just always breaking those rules and just being out of pocket, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? And not just coming with that same boom, mm-hmm. boom, boom. Like, you know what I'm saying? The, mm-hmm. the same, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know how it's gonna drop, you know how the hi hat's gonna go, like not not trying to do that. Rest in peace to my brother's school, but y'all had created a sound that was crazy. Facts. Can you talk about school? Man, school, legend. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna lie. School, like, I have been knowing school, from like coming up in Atlanta too on the whole underground scene. Like he was always working, you know what I'm saying? Coming out of the east side, like duct tape, like alley, like, you know what I'm saying? They had like a whole wave, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And it was like, all of us were coming up, you know what I'm saying? And then school, like we was always around the same age, but I always knew school could rap, like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like he was always hard. So then it was like, boom, we we're moving around, rest in peace of bank roll. Mm-hmm. Like I was moving around at this time. I would be in LA and then I'd come back to Atlanta. And then I'd be like, man, all right, boom. Like, cause I'm always thinking about like, what I'm gonna do for it. Like, we gotta do it for the city. Like, mm-hmm. what's gonna be like a, another like city win? So it was like Bank Roll. I was like, man, I'm gonna lock in with Bank Roll. Like, and then we did a couple songs of my Ransom project. And then like, we're, we're working on some stuff. And then boom, he, he had passed. Mm-hmm. And then it was like school. I would like keep in touch with school and he would like send me songs here and there. School would either be focused on music or he did not focus yeah, on music. Yeah, so I'm yeah. telling school like, bro, I'm here. Like you ain't gotta keep telling me to send your beats. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Like whenever you wanna focus, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I'm here. Mm-hmm. So then next thing you know, school started dropping different mixtapes and I was hearing them. I'll be tapping in on his mixtapes and I'll call him like, bro, you went crazy on this on the mixtape with you and Zaytoven. Or you went crazy on this mixtape, da da. Hey bro, boom. Man, my boy Ducko gonna come to the studio. Man, y'all y'all boys cook up some. I'm gonna be back in town this week. They did Big God. I ended up using that on uh, Ransom too. Mm-hmm. And I was like, my favorite song, like like how he kept that motherfucker. So I was like, man, I told school, I was like, bro, when I get back to it, hey, bro, we just gotta like lock in, make a sound, you just put it out. And then bro, like, man, people gonna come to you. People gonna gravitate to you, bro. Like, cause you hard, bro, I don't know what, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what it's gonna take or what. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's just, whenever I get back, like, let's just lock in. So mm-hmm. he was like, all right, bet. So boom, I was at Tree Sound one night. It was like 12 or one in the morning. I thought about it. I was like, damn, I'm supposed to hit school. And I hit him. I'm like, yo, school, where the hell you at? He was like, I'm in the city. I'm like, I'm about to drop you the address. Pull up to the studio. Send him the address. He came out there to Tree Sound. We did bring it back. As soon as he walked in the room, I was making a bring it back beat. As soon as he walked in the room, he was like, I'm just on the motherfucking mm-hmm. pantry. Diamonds on the young nigga. 
dancing. You know what I'm saying? He was like, hey man, load the beat up. Load the beat up. I'm like, bro, I ain't even done with the beat. You know what I'm saying? He's like, man, load that shit up, bro. That shit hard. I'm like, man, look, record the beat, man. Let him get on it. So he got on it. Did you do Dauphine? Which one? Did y'all do Dauphine? No, we ain't do Dauphine. Yeah. That's one of that album, the last album he did. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't do Dauphine, but man, Dauphine was hard to have. Dauphine was hard. Hey, school got, man, he got, man, rest in peace, school, man. He got so much music, like, you know what I'm saying? Word up, like. For real, but that Edgewood project, it was just something special. That shit was major for the mm-hmm. South. Like, yeah. if y'all ain't heard that Edgewood, man, you gotta go tap in. I definitely heard it. That shit definitely classic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got a classic for sure. Word up. 2013, Miley Cyrus, Beyonce, Future, 2 Chains, Kendrick, all the, the who's who in music. Nah, How sure. did that happen? Then you signed with Interscope at the same time. Talk about all that happening at one time. I dropped songs with all of them on it, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, I started off in the underground in Atlanta and then just stand down with like, Pluto, Two Chains, Gucci, and just looking at them like, man, these guys gonna be the biggest. We're not thinking about no Grammys. We're not thinking about. I'm not thinking about nothing else. I'm just looking at like, man, these guys gonna be the biggest. And then, like, just locking in with them. And then we coming through the game. And you know what I'm saying? Like, like we said, ain't no way around it. And um, and Dirty Sprite and Itching. That was all 2011. So 2012, it was um, that's for the future. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then with two chains, it was Got One and Lala. Um, 2011, 2012, it was um, as turn much on music the, as you made, bro. I don't know how you remember this because this was a significant part of my career. I was mm-hmm. hungry, mm-hmm. I was I, like starving, like literally, like I ain't have no management at this time. Mm-hmm. I ain't know nothing about the music business. I wasn't getting no music, I wasn't getting no money off of music or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, boom, 2012, it was like no lie. Uh, Turn on the lights and bands make a dance. I was like the breakout year. I still didn't have no management. That's when I met my management. You know what I'm saying? And then boom. After that, it was like uh Rihanna poured up. Um, you know what I'm saying? Then I met with Miley's label. Boom. Do it. Then we did We Can't Stop 23. That was 2013. And you know what I'm saying? Now we're cooking with now we now we cooking like our executive produced Miley album. I'm right here moving around with Pluto. We dropped Move That Dope. I ended up meeting with Jimmy Iovine like every day, like from 2012 to 2014 when I signed my deal. Like I was really, I was. it really took me like a year and a half, two years to even sign my deal. Cause I was just nervous about that shit. I'm like, I'm winning, I'm winning when it comes to production. I got 13 songs on the radio. Do I want to turn into an executive? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't want to do anything where I was going to lose that. So I was nervous at that shit. And then that's when that's when um Jimmy was just telling me like man yo man you can't lose you're not a loser you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying you can either learn or earn mm-hmm. and and that and that shit stuck with me learn or earn you can either learn or earn and I just signed my deal first artist first artist we signed was Ray Shrimmer. you know what I'm saying that's ear drummers backwards mm-hmm. like you know what I'm saying Jimmy and Sway Lee they were already stars and so I'm like man bro I never knew that it's still going on over people's head I was I was ten years ago. <laughs> So my record label, Ear Drummers, I started 2007, you know what I'm saying? That's hard. When I came with the record label, I was like, man, I'm gonna have a rock and roll side, you know what I'm saying? And I wrote down, what's Ear Drummers backwards? So I wrote it down and it was Ray Shrimmer. I was like, man, I'm gonna start a rock band called Mm. Ray Shrimmer. You know what I'm saying? Ray Shrimmer, that's crazy, dog. And then when I met met Jimmy and Sway, they they were rock and roll artists to me. When I saw them, they straight from Tupelo, Mississippi. My boy P. Nasty had them at their crib. Country boys. Yeah. I already seen them a couple of times. They came to the club with us a couple of times. They were young. You know what I'm saying? And I and I know they were songwriting. But when I saw them, like, in their artist mode, and, like, Sway Lee rapping and Jimmy behind them screaming ad-libs or, like, rapping with them, and then Jimmy would jump in and start rapping and Sway Lee got the same energy, I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't know what. I, I, leaned, I remember I leaned on the wall. I'm like, bro. <laughs> These dudes, the fuck they some it? real rock stars. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and I told them this shit. I'm like, bro, y'all some real rock stars. So, boom. Next thing you know, their name was Sway. So it was Jimmy mm-hmm. Sway and, and uh, Sway Lee. I was just telling them, like, man, my man is Sway in the morning. So if I go to Stat, like, bro, you heard that new shit I got with Sway? They're gonna think you that. Gonna, you gonna think yeah. like, you got a song with Sway in the morning? Like, damn, that's crazy. I ain't no Sway in the morning be rapping. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gonna <laughs> oh, be like, Oh, you was damn. on the show freestyling or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it might not register. But if, I'm like, man, what y'all think about the name Ray Shrimmer? So they were like, what's that? I'm like, man, that's eardrummer backwards. They are like, oh, shit, that's hard. That's super and hard. And then they were like, man, yo, we'll fuck with that. Hell yeah, man, Shrimp Life. 
I'm like, that could be the name of the album. See, with them, I already knew they gonna make anything cool. Yeah. So it's like, man, they could they could be that rock band. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, yo, it's gonna take people a long time to even catch up with it. And they ain't gonna know how to say it. But it's like, man, we don't go to these other countries and tell people like, man, yo, we only know how to speak English. You know what I'm saying? Like, speak English. Like, nah, you learn their language. You move how they move, you eat how they eat. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's like, man, boom, if they like y'all records, y'all got all these hits, they're gonna learn how to say Ray Shrimmer. Right. <laughs> They'll Straight learn up. that it's Ill Drummer backwards yeah. 10 years later. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Word That's up. Funny. I wanna mention a few names to you, Jared, what it was like, the, the working process with them and, and what that track meant to you. Uh, Rihanna and Poured Up. Shout out to Teron and shout out to my brother j -Bo, You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Omar, man, he kept bugging me. Like, cause that's when Bands to Make a Dance was hot. So he kept saying like, yo, Mike, if Rihanna just had the female version of Bands to Make a Dance, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, she'll be out of here. And I'm like, bro, quit saying, I, like, I, I hate when people say like, man, yo, if if I had um Black Beatles, yo, just give me Black Beatles, man. I, I hate <laughs> you that. Can't you can't know make that saying? again. Yeah, I just hate that. You so then, that but again. it was like, it was like this beat that my boy J-Bo had made that was exactly like Bands to Make a Dance. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like another version. I was like, man, y'all really want that? All right, bet. Boom, I played the beat. Teron, he a hell of a writer, you know what I'm saying? So he just goes straight in, start catching the vibe, you know what I'm saying? And then, boom, Chris Brown come to the studio, and, you know what I'm saying, Chris Brown come to the studio, and he here, and he like, he like, man, yo, shit, re heard this? I was like, man, no, nah, she ain't heard it yet. He was like, man, I'm gonna tell her about this one. And I was like, I'm like, man, that's hard, man, say less, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, Rihanna called the next day, Carl Obama was like, yo, what's the song Chris talking about that Mike Will got? You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, boom, she hears Pour It Up. She cuts that shit last minute for the album. I didn't even know if I was going to make the album. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Karen Kwok for flying us out there, having us work on that. And you know what I'm saying? That was like a beautiful thing. Like, And it was crazy because Rihanna, she never had a record like that at the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, She never had like a... Strip club Strip record, clubs and dollar yeah, bill. or like a club record. It was, mm -hmm. So it was like that was an all the way new sound, mm -hmm. and that's what I try to do. Like when I'm producing these records, like I always want to make that record where a person remembers where they were at mm -hmm. when, when they, they heard that shit, yeah. or what they were, like what year it was. That's why I can re read off these years like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to. You I want a person to feel like that, that like yeah, yeah. like mm -hmm. I remember, bro. I was that's what music like does. A music you hear something and be like, man, '97. I was in high school. This is when I heard when you said Blue the Blue good Blue ones. with Jay Z. Exactly. I was in college, UCLA. You Facts. Know, I just went with the motherfucking Tower Records and bought that shit, put in my new Tahoe that someone paid for and got for me, <laughs> and that shit was you know what I mean. So you always like, time and place with music, right? Yeah, and that's crazy, bro. And that that's the good shit. Yeah. Or either that shit can be like. Some some potato chips, you, just, you know what I'm saying? You just <laughs> eat the whole bag and never get yeah. full, like you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. like you could hear this shit a thousand times and yeah. never even remember that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's like those songs that really stick with you are like those ones for real. Like yeah. that's what I always try to aim for when I'm producing these records. Black Beatles, you spoke to it. It went viral with Obama Man. in the Mannequin Challenge. Black Beatles, right? Black Beatles, that was a crazy one because it was like. Dude who gave me my first shot, Gucci, and then the artist that I'm my first artist, and I'm giving them they they real shot, you know what I'm saying? All and they together. first song together, Wait. and then it's all of our first number ones. <sighs> At this point, I didn't work with Rihanna, Beyonce, Miley, everybody, you know what I'm saying? But like, I got that, that number one, one yeah. with the person who gave me my first shot and the so artist, you my you first breaking. artist. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's first dope. number one Hot 100. Like, mm. That was crazy and the whole world froze. Only that in the pandemic made the whole world freeze. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit was, that was And that was crazy. Yeah. And it was like that beat, I felt like that beat wasn't ever, wasn't even done. And that just show, that just speaks to like Sway Lee, how much he's a, like a how much he's an instrument. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I thought that beat wasn't done, but I didn't know what I needed. So I just sent it to him like, man, see, man, this beat hard. You needed him. I'm, I'm gonna add something else, but just get on there. Yeah. He was like, man, this shit hard. <laughs> he did the Black Beetle hook, sent yeah. it back. Gucci just came home from jail. I'm like, bro, listen to this song Sway just sent me. I'm like, bro, get on this joint. Gucci got on that joint. Boom, Jimmy got on that joint. You know what I'm saying? We had already turned in that album. That was like a last minute joint. Word up. Kanye, mercy. He was the first artist to fly us out of town to work. Like before then, I had never worked out of town. So he had flew me uh, to New York, me and my boy P. Nash, and we were just up there cooking up. 
And like, I wanted like, one of my man, my man JP, man, he had told me like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know if JP want me to say his name or not, man. That's my man though. But he had told me like, bro, do not just go up there to put your drums on shit. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all do a song together. I was like, man, all right, all right, bet. So, yay. First thing, first day I meet him, he was like, man, I got this song. I just need you to put your drums on that shit. Cause you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, said. Yeah, he was, like, he was like, I need you to put your drums on that shit. He was like, man, cause I fuck with your drums. He was like, there's a time in music. See, I respected it because he came to me and said like, yo, there's a time in music where like, you know what I'm saying? A producer comes through with a certain sound and a certain frequency and they just need the right artists with the right tone to just cut through on that shit. And right now you that guy. And this was my first day meeting him. So I, I'm thinking like, it's so many different producers around. I'm thinking like, man, one of his A&R probably just flew me up here. He ain't gonna know who I am for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? But when he had said that, I was like, damn, that's hard. So I'm like, all right, bet. You know what I'm saying? So I was really more focused on like, I really wanted him to get on like some of these beats that we had. But then like he played Mercy and he played it with no drums. And I was like, damn, this shit is hard. You know what I'm saying? This shit is a hit, bro. Like, I'm like, all right, bet. Then he he let me hear the one with drums. He was like, I like this version, but I feel like this version is kind of like doing the drums that you do. He was like, so I just want you to go in and do, you know what I'm saying? Put your touch on it. So I'm like, all right, bet. Did some drums on there. And the next thing you know, like he took it to the radio with, with another song. Boom. Went on the radio. That shit just went up. I was like, damn, that was like at the same time No Lie came out. Mm -hmm. Same time Turn On The Lights got on the radio. Same time Juicy J just put out Bands Make A Dance. So it was like all this shit just happening like quick. You know what yes. I'm saying? I'm like, man. What year I did is this? The, it's 2012. I did the bare minimum with the, with these drums, but it's like that yay effect. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that Heavy. shit was, yeah. Heavy. Shook that shit up. Bands To Make A Dance. Juicy Band J, Wayne, Chains. Bands Chains The Game. Yeah, that shit was crazy. I I had sent juice. I had just linked up with Juicy J, and I had sent him a pack of beats. And then um, it was just one. It was that beat. I was like, bro, this one right here is a smash. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, please get on this one. Woo. So he had hit me back. He was like, yo, I was at my homegirl house last night, and man, I, I I did a setup in her kitchen, and man, bro, I went in on that beat. I was like, what? You know what I'm saying? This time I'm like, what the hell? He talking about? He did a setup in the kitchen. Like, I'm like, send it to me, huh? So boom, he sent me the he sent me the song. Man, I heard that shit. I was like, all I saw was Magic City, DOA, mm. Onyx. I'm like, bro, I already know what to do with Anthem. this. I was out of town. I was in LA. I was like, I know what to do with this. I called him. I'm like, hey, we got a hit. I'm like, as soon as I get back to Atlanta, it's gonna be the biggest song in the strip club. Like, bro, I promise you. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Next thing you know, go back to Atlanta, playing the joint, strip clubs, shit go up, and it was just juicy on there. You know what I'm saying? And then I played it for a couple more people. We were trying to figure out who we wanted to get on there. He had a session with Wayne. Wayne got on there. Two Chains got on there. The rest was history. We re-released yeah. it on my mixtape. And then boom. Mm, tough. Shit was crazy. Jay-Z, Beach is Better. All right, so Beach is Better started off like Big Sean had 10 to 10. He had that song 10 mm -hmm. to 10. So he wanted a beat around 10 to 10. So like we had did a couple beats around like the acapella voice note that he had. And Beach is Better was one of them. You know what I'm saying? So my boy Mars had sent me a couple options and I was like, yo, look, man, this beat hard. Like, hey, do this and that. On the, I'm, I'm on the phone with him, telling him different edits to make, da, da, da. And then next thing you know, Mars sent me over the beat. I'm in the studio with Miley. There's two people from Coldplay right here that had pulled up mm. just to like Kay. hear different beats. Mm -hmm. so, you know what I'm saying? And then I heard Miley say ad lib. So the ah, and, and that beat is better. That's an that's a ad lib that I took from like Miley session and put like an effect on it and put it on this beat that, that Mars had sent. Then I sent it to Big Sean like, bro, this, this gotta be the one. Like, you know what I'm saying? We put the extra juice on this one. Like, this gotta be the one. So I never heard from Big Sean. Then the next week I had a session with Hove. So I was locked in with Hove the whole week. And then boom. So I'm, I'm, I'm playing them different beats and my man Ryan Press was like, hey bro, play on that Big Sean drunk. I'm like, man, I can't do that to Big Sean, bro. Like, Hell no, nah, he gonna fuck with that. He was like, bro. Mm. He was like, man, just play it for him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you don't never know. Like, right. just play it for him. I was like, man, yo, I got this beat that I did for Big Sean, but I'm waiting to hear back from him. You know what I'm saying? He was like, oh yeah, let me hear it. So I played the beat. He heard that shit. He was like, yo, so what Big Sean say? 
I was like, man, I ain't, I ain't heard nothing back. You know <laughs> nothing. what I'm saying? He was like, yo, we're going to give Big Sean seven business days. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For real. I was like, I'm like, all right, say less. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I had reached out to Sean. I was like, man, bro, what are we going to do with the with the 10 to 10? He was like, no, I had, I had this other version that I like. I was like, oh, for real? I was like, all right, bet. Cool. Say less. You, you know was okay saying? with him not fucking with him. Yeah, I was like, it's all good, bro. That's my brother. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's my Aries brother. You know Come what I'm saying? That's hove though, too. Yeah, 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 for sure. So yeah. Oh, you're, yeah, for sure. That's funny. You know what I'm saying? So next thing you know, like Hove had got on that beach is better. I remember Khaled had called me like, yo, yo, Hove did a record on on that one beach you left him. He was like, man, I'm trying to get him to put a second verse on here, Mike. This shit is gonna be a problem. And then everybody kept, I, I would hear about it. It was like, a, you know what I'm saying? I would hear about this record. They finally said it's going on the album. So then, boom, whole, it's crazy because whole rock with his engineer, like the long way, like guru, you know what I'm saying? Guru, a goat. But at this time, I'm trying to like really stamp that sound. Like, so I ain't want anybody to like mix any any records of, of mine. Cause I, you know what I'm saying? I had this engineer that I worked with, Jason Joshua. And you know what I'm saying? Like with him, it was like, we already went through a thousand songs already and we didn't already, he like, we got this sound now. We got our mm -hmm. product supply chain going. So now it's like, yo, Big John, man, I need, I need my man to mix the record. Big John like, look, Mike, this ain't the time to be difficult, man. Like this whole man, like just send the files. Like don't, don't try to be difficult. I was like, bro, listen, I'm not trying to be difficult. You know what I'm saying? At all. like. If Ho fuck with Guru, let like Guru mix the vocals, let my man mix the beat. I just need this beat to sound how it's supposed to sound. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So he like, man, I'll highlight him, I'll see what's up. So boom, finally they say like, okay, cool. Go ahead and do it. Boom, we mix the beat. You know what I'm saying? They send the vocals over that's mixed. We put it with it, they send it back. They're like, yo, man, this shit is crazy. Da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? So next thing you know, they ended up reaching out to my man, Jason. Jason ended up mixing a couple more songs on the album. That shit ended up playing out That's dope, hard. you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Word up, but yeah. each is better was. Do a lot of, I didn't mean to cut you off, but do a lot of rappers send you they vocals without the beat and you build beats around, they do that a lot? It's different every time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, I like doing that though. That's you know that, that's that's the that's a hard process or it's easier for you? I love that, it's easy yeah. for me. You know what I'm saying? Because we can just, I got the tempo. I got the tempo that they rap to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got, you know what I'm saying? We got the click track. We could just make a beat. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like every song is always different because sometimes, like, like with a super producer, right? To me, like, a super producer is like somebody who could be like hands on or hands off with the record. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and go through the whole process. Like, you can make the beat, you can write the lyrics, you can engineer, you know what I'm saying? You can mix the song mm -hmm. or you can be hands off. And, and get the right engineer to mix it mm -hmm. or get the right person to make the beat or get the right person to do the melodies or get the right person to do the mm -hmm. drums or get and, and be able to communicate with the, the engineer and see it all the way through. You can't even communicate with the engineer if you don't understand what reverb, delay, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, all that kind of stuff is. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Like verify or, you know what I'm saying, the tempo or speeding it up a couple BPMs, all that kind of language is like, you can't even communicate or even know what you're looking for right there if you don't even, if you're not, if you're not that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But like, I feel like with a super producer, it's automatic, you know what I'm saying? You can communicate with anybody from, like I said, the musician in the room, to the drummer, to the person that's on the beat machine, to the songwriters, to the artists, and knowing like, put this artist with this artist, cause this is rare. And like, you know what I'm saying? This is going, like Miley Cyrus, Wiz Khalifa and Juicy J is like, mm -hmm. they don't see Miley Cyrus Different. rapping, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, yeah. they don't even know who to go to get to write a rap for Miley Cyrus mm -hmm. song, or you know what I'm saying? Right. Who to get to get that beat and that make it mastermind. super futuristic, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. so it's like being hands on and hands off with that shit. Like, cause like Black Beatles, like I made that beat quick. You know what I'm saying? Send it right this way, boom. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, it's different processes on, on, on producing every song. Like, and you got different ways. Like the new joint I just did with Sexy Red, Perfect Match. That was a song that she already had in her head. So she just went in, she she rapped it a cappella, and now made a beat around it right there. You know what I'm saying? At the studio. Just knowing your process and just knowing, like, I'm big on the product supply chain now. That's what I picked up over these years. It's like just looking at everything like the product supply chain, raw material, supplier, manufacturer, distributor, retail, consumer. You know what I'm saying? 
and knowing that I need to live, I, 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 I like perfect it and I live over here in the left space, like in the raw material supplier manufacturer. So sometimes I'm the raw material where I might make the beat and then might go to the studio and be the supplier and bring that beat. Or sometimes the artist might be the raw material and, and like Sexy Red, like have this song that she raps acapella and then she supplies that and then I make the beat around it and then add different features on it. She added two more features on there. And you know what I'm saying? So, and then you have certain pro certain processes where it's like, I got a whole production team. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Where it's like, I pull up on P Nasty or I pull up on Mars. I'm like, bro, I hear this person on this beat. And then I, I'm the supplier. I'm taking this raw material, I'm the supplier and I'm bringing it to this and we manufacturing something right here. And like, like, like Move That Dope was like a song like that. It was just like, like different pieces. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it was like Future laid the hook and then I had an old Future verse, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, we were trying to wrap up Honest. So I had this Future hook on this one beat and then P Nasty had a hook on the same beat that he was, that he was um, writing for Shrimp. That's that popping bottles. Don't it make you feel good? Mm -hmm. Like him and Shrimp wrote that. So like, boom, I was like, man, this is sound hard under this one hook that Future did on the same yeah, beat, P, you know what I'm saying? So boom, took that, made that yeah. the ad-libs, yeah. took this old Future verse, put it right here, let Pharrell here. Pharrell like, oh shit, bro, I gotta get on this. I'm like, all right, bet. Boom, add Pharrell on here. I'm not even telling Future the whole time, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. add Pharrell in this joint. The next thing, I'm not, next thing I know, I'm like, yo, bro, Man, see a pusher add a verse on here. You know what I'm saying? Push it, get on there, body it. Mm. Pharrell send another verse back. Like, yo, <laughs> man, I had to go harder. You know what I'm saying? Push it went yeah, too crazy. Right. But I like Push parts of Pharrell's first verse. So boom, I took parts of Pharrell's first verse and his second verse and pieced that shit together That's and crazy, sent it. And, and I, That's and, hard. And I sent it to Pharrell. And I'm thinking he heard it. I'm thinking like, because he gave me the thumbs up. So I thought he heard it. Man, he ain't even hear it. So when the song came out, he was like, like, what the hell? Like, what is this, bro? Like, this is not what I sent you. Like, I'm like, bro, I sent it to you. I got the green light. Like, he was like, man, I thought you just mixed what I sent you, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So he was thrown off at first, but everybody loved it. And then Future so loved cool. it. Yeah. And we was at the video. And Future told him he loved it. So he felt cool with yeah, it. We shot the wait. video. And the world ended up, like, loving that oh, joint. Yeah, so it's like, dope. yeah. Humble won a Grammy in 2018 with Kendrick. Uh, speak to that process. Man, it was crazy, man. Kendrick, we were rocking, you know what I'm saying? Before we even did a song, we was already rocking for seven years. Uh -huh. So I started out rocking with Schoolboy Q. Q linked me and Dot. I turned to Hella Beats for Good Kid, Mad City, Hella Beats for To Pimp a Butterfly. And then like, he dropped those projects. And then like, right after that, he was just like, man, bro, I'm gonna pull up on you. I'm about to start this album. I wanna just pull up on you early. Uh, I'm gonna start yeah. the album early. Mm -hmm. So boom, he pulled up at the crib. Man, listen to a bunch of beats, grabbed a bunch of beats. I'm like, man, damn, I hope I don't miss this next album where he, right. whatever he talking about. And then he just had this one week where he just locked in. And then he did uh, Humble, he did um, DNA, and he did uh, XXX. And he sent me them, he sent me like videos on his phone. I'm like, damn, man, this man going crazy. I couldn't wait to get to LA. Went to, L went to LA, I couldn't even wrap my mind around like XXX. Humble was like an automatic banger. like. XXX, I, I couldn't wrap my mind around it in a good way. I was fucked up. It was like that innovation process or stage, like, you know what I'm saying? DNA, I was like, yo, this is a single right here. Like, this is how you come back and just go crazy. Like, and me and him were like dead set on that. And he was telling me, like, humble. He was like, man, bro, I'm going I'm to let you get humble for ransom too. I'm like, hell no. Like, humble, like, hum, humble's a banger too. He was like, yeah, but they just don't fit my album. I'm like, bro, you tripping, bro. Like, but I take it, but like you tripping, like you know what I'm saying. And then he was like, "Man, I think that's the one. I'm gonna let you know, but I think that's the one I'm gonna let you get for your album." I was like, "All right, bet." So then I left the studio. I was like, "Bro," I was telling my boys, I was like, "Man, Kendrick got this hard ass song, bro. He talking about let me use it for the album. It, it'll be big for the album, but it's gonna be bigger oh, if he is. put it out, right? Like, you know what I'm saying?" So mm -hmm. he hit me. He was like, "Man, yo, top saying the same shit, bro. He saying humble the one." <laughs> I was like, "Bro, I'm telling you, bro, that's the one." He was like. Man, all right, which one you think I should go with first? I was like, man, if you go on radio, man, just go humble. That shit already a hit. DNA just shows like, man, you you that hell of a rapper. They mm -hmm. already know that, but they gonna get that regardless. That was different. Humble yeah. was different. Yeah. And and like he dropped that humble. That shit just exploded. He dropped. He shot that crazy video. 
Mm. She just went crazy, man. That's Shout dope. out to Dot Ear Mastermind. Hell yeah. Last but not least, Queen B, Lemonade. Formation was crazy. Mm -hmm. Sway Lee and Jimmy, they hell of a songwriters, right? But like, if you tell them like, yo, I need y'all to write a song for Beyonce, it might throw them off. So it was like, I snuck it in, I, we were riding in the car, and we were going to Coachella. And then I had this beat, like, Beyonce was already hitting for like records. But I was like, man, if we do a song with Beyonce, bro, like this gotta be like a woman empowerment. This gotta be like single ladies level. This gotta be like, you know what I'm saying? It's gotta be like up there. So I was in the car with them and I was like, man, bro, I was just playing beats. I'm like, man, we need to make the next, man, female anthem, bro. Like, man, we gotta make, we gotta go single ladies See, level, you, bro. You like, didn't put a name on it though. Nah, you just gave them the vibe, the yeah. energy. Yeah, I was like, man, we gotta just turn, like, we gotta turn the females up, like, bro, like, Man, we gotta do, ooh. I was just throwing that out there. And then Sway was just like, nah, for real. Y'all can write a female joint. Y'all ain't even gotta think about who it's for. It's just That's right. what, like, what it be like a chant. Like, they just looking for like that, that swag that y'all coming with. Cause it's like, y'all different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all coming in a different pocket. So man, Sway started freestyling to the beat. And then next thing you know, I heard him say, okay, ladies, now let's get the information. I'm like, hey, what you just said? <laughs> and then he was like, he was like, okay, lady, you know, let's get in for a minute. I'm like, bruh. I turned out, pulled out the voice notes. He rapping that shit. And then next thing you know, and Jimmy came to the studio. He heard him. Jimmy went in the booth, laid some shit down. And I was like, that's all y'all gotta do. Don't even worry about making it a song or nothing. Like, boom. So I took that 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 reference vocal. We started working on some other shit. And I sent like four records to Beyonce. And then um I had went to um I had went to a Laker game and like Brown was playing, you know what I'm saying? This before he was on the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? Um he was playing with Cleveland. But I, I saw Brown playing and I ran into Rich. And Rich had already put together the commercial that I did for Brown in 2013 with the Nike commercial. So boom, I saw Rich. We staying at the same hotel. He was like, man, come get some dinner, da, da. after you know what I'm saying, after the game, da, da, da. I'm like, all right, bet. So he had called me later and then I was down there eating with them. Him, Brian, everybody, the team. And then next thing you know, Hov and B just pulled up, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Out of nowhere. Then they, everybody down there, we just passing the ox, just listening to shit. And then next thing you know, B was like, yo, I like one of those ideas you sent me. I was like, for real? And then I was like, which one? She was like, man, that formation. I was like, man, I was hoping you would fuck with that. You know what I'm saying? That's she was dope. like, yeah, yeah, like I fuck with that. Like I'm gonna I'm write some stuff too. I'm gonna go in and do some verses and this and that, this and that. I was like, oh yeah, I'm like, that's hard. So next thing you know, I go to New York, lock in with her for like a week. And then we just put the final touches on there. But now she has like a real record. Like she just took the, okay ladies, now let's get information. She took like, certain like like a little line or two that she that she got inspired by and then wrote her verses and now it's like a whole record about like not only female empowerment but like black empowerment her her people empowerment her family mm -hmm. empowerment mm -hmm. like you boss know what i'm saying up. she just yeah it's just like some bossed up female yeah, vibes yeah. and then um so we just stayed up there in new york meet her plus her engineer you know what i'm saying and we just put like the final touches on the record or whatnot and next thing you know like Boom, we get formation. That's, That's crazy. crazy how it came together. All right, man, last part, quick hitters. Uh, first thing to come to mind, let us know. Uh, top five music producers of all time, in your opinion. We got to say Quincy, man. Quincy, Manny Fresh, Juicy J, Kanye West. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Diddy. Name five. <laughs> you know oh, what I'm man. saying? Like, yeah. Word. Like, all, all of them right there. Any any producer that came through and- Disrupted the yeah, game. Yeah, disrupted the game. Like, mm -hmm. uh, my bad, Pharrell. You know what I'm saying? Pharrell, for sure. Timbo, you know what I'm saying? But like any 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 producer that just came through and like disrupted that game. Like I feel like and and showed that range. Quincy, like this man, he had such a vision. I feel like as a producer, as a as a as like a dope producer, like you you got the vision, you're able to see the unseen. So like Quincy was like real dope at that from from my understanding. I don't really know him like that, or I ain't never really worked with him mm -hmm. or met him, but just like like studying his projects, like, and he knew how to be real strict and he knew how to make that shit cut through. Like, you know what I'm saying? Any producer that does that, like Pharrell, like, you know what I'm saying? Timbo, Kanye, you know what I'm saying? Like, like um, then you got other producers too, like like Mark Ronson and you got, you got all kind of different people quick, man. It's, it's yeah, 
I don't even know why you asked me that, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to all of them. Shout out to all the producers yeah. that's changing the game, that's For real. original, and that's, you know what I'm saying, doing their mm-hmm. own thing that's out of pocket. Who you childhood crush? Childhood crush, I had a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? Not Give me a, player, a top two or three. <laughs> Who was you crushing on? Shawhood, Aaliyah for sure. Yeah. Overly, I was crying when she died. Mm-hmm. Cause I had plans, like, man, she was, <laughs> she was a queen. Like, I mean, real. actually touched they childhood crush though. She was the one. Came in and say that. For real. They touched their childhood crush. One album you listen to on repeat, no skips. I like uh, Michael Jackson Thriller. Ooh. Tupac. Ain't nobody said that. Yeah, All Michael, I... ja- Michael Jackson Thriller and Prince, Purple Rain, for sure. Tupac, All Eyes on Me. 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. Them four right there are my holy grail. Uh-huh. When I, If I'm producing any album, I'm going I'm to tap in. I'm going to tap in to those. Some of that. Nine songs on, on, on Thriller, nine songs on, on Purple mm. Rain. It's very focused. But All Eyes on Me is like long as hell, but it's yeah. so many bangers. Mm-hmm. Get Rich or Die Trying is like bangers after classic. bangers. Classic, classic. You can still sleep on that. Don't give mm-hmm. 50 his props, bro. Mm-mm. Five dinner guests, dead or alive. You can't ask for these kind you of questions. See what I'm saying? Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, just I don't name know. five people, bro. Just name five, five people. Yes, you will not have dinner with. You, you tell me, bro. I ask this question every damn day on my show. You but can you answer it? Huh? Do you no, answer? No, no, no. We never answered it. Exactly. So who? Nah. who so you want to ask five. me? Yeah, I want to ask you. Five dinner guests dead alive. Okay. I would do uh, dead or alive. Michael Jordan, uh, Malcolm X, Huey P. Newton, uh, Mega Evers, and um, probably uh, Regina Hall. Your crush. Don't ask me. Five? I can name another five right now. That's you your are. first. That's your you first. Yeah, That's the first five. time I heard it. I, I like want that. some ability, some funny, some you know. Yeah, I want to learn yeah. something, but yeah, I want to look real. at something too. You yeah. feel? Maybe touch something. Oh, that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, if, if you could see any guests on All the Smoke, who would it be? But, but you have to help us get your answer on our show. Sway Lee. Ooh, that was a no-brainer. That's a good that's call. Right. Yeah, easy. He's in L.A. too, ain't he? Yeah, yeah, LA. yeah. In Miami. Yeah, in Miami. We need to make that happen. You worldwide, man. You know, you're on Swizzy. Yeah. For well, real. Mike, man, we appreciate your time. Continued man. success. Congratulations on all the new projects with the NBA and, and, and the new stuff you have coming. And keep us I in mind that. for our, our new All Smoke jingle. We would love a jingle. Nah, man, for sure. I'm going to fuck with y'all. I got a that. couple bars for it. Jack is out in Atlanta. I'm you might use those bars, man. you might throw them away, but we still want your jingle. Man, Jack going to come with some shit. I'm going to yeah. write a diss track about this. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, nigga. Man, we appreciate you, man. You can catch this on YouTube. You know where we at. We all the smoke production. Yeah. All the smoke production. Yeah, smoke big production. boy shit. We that's out here, that's man. That's y'all shit right yeah. there. Yeah, we just started. <laughs> You're the second show under the <laughs> new umbrella, baby. Yes, we appreciate indeed. you. Inspired by Big Big Oom Productions, you can be like, all the smoke productions. That could be your little tag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On, that's man. it. Man, get your happen. little kid. We'll see y'all next week, man. Appreciate it.